G'day YouTube, this is just a quick overview of a new or a much recently hyped operating system called Tails OS recently in the media or online and other avenues. Now it's a, it's a security driven or focused operating system. Uh, the whole point of it is to encrypt your data across the internet so that uh, no eavesdroppers can actually see it. Now it's um, the the title of this video probably isn't perfect because there's always a chance that uh, operating systems can be compromised. But uh, I'll just go over the features of this one then talk about it for a little bit. So starting off, this is called uh, Tails 1.1, Tails OS 1.1. It's currently in uh, production mode, hence the point or, or the one onwards. It used to be in uh, beta mode for a couple of years since 2009 when it started. It took over from another operating system named uh, uh, incognito I believe which was basically founded on the same principles now as you can see it runs as standard the GNOME operating system so that's pretty much uh, a little bit old like the GNOME classic as they call it these days but it is lightweight it is fast and it is stable so I'm always uh, quite a fan of this this, op uh, this GNOME uh, desktop environment uh, moving on, it's uh, the Office Utilities, so it still has lots of normal programs such as LibreOffice, LibreCalc, all that sort of things, as opposed to OpenOffice. Uh, now the kernel on this, now the current kernel would be, uh, let's have a look actually, so if I were just to open a terminal, type in uname A, oh, okay good, 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 so we have kernel, uh, Linux kernel 3.14, which is actually a later release than my uh, Linux Mint or my Ubuntu, which is 3.13, so that's really good to see. Moving on, uh, I could only find a 32-bit architecture for, for this actual operating system. There may be a 64 out there, but uh, 32 seems to be all there is at the moment that I can see anyway, or easily downloadable. Uh, now, being that it's Debian based, you can actually install uh, apps, uh, normal apps that you might get. For example, Dropbox. I just installed that a moment ago. So, as I can see and understand, uh, you can actually install like applications that can also be installed on Ubuntu as well. Uh, moving on, uh, let's see. There is a number of issues that they mention actually with this uh, with this operating system, including. Uh, I can't fully remember the bugs, so I'll try to open up this web browser. Actually, this is one of the bugs or the problems as well, the fact that the, the browser actually loads a little bit slowly, I find, uh, which is a bit of a shame. And, I mean, it is connecting to the Tor network, as we can see here, bandwidth graph, see a bit of information on that. But, um, basically... It's uh, it's using the secure version of every program you can think of. For example, you've got the uh, Ice Wizard web browser that has Tor uh, stuck onto it. You've also got uh, Tor in the background just for normal internet connections that don't use a web browser as well. So uh, it's just Tor all over the place, really. You've got uh, also a some internet applications, uh, the I2P protocol, which is what they use the back the back end for uh, encrypting data across the network for Tails OS and many other applications for that matter. Uh, don't know quite much about this unsafe web browser nonsense but that's probably so that you can actually access websites like uh, YouTube a lot easier. And that does bring me back to the to the bug issues. Uh, let's see, going down, having a look, it mentions it somewhere on bug fixes, no, no, known issues, things like that. But what actually are uh, known issues are, uh, yeah, so it's a bit slow to start and stop the Tor browser. It's uh, You can't actually use FTP whatsoever. Uh, YouTube is very slow if it works at all. Uh, there's issues with DB drives opening, closing. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, it's got an issue with installing on certain types of laptops or desktop computers, so please make sure that you check that you've got the right computer before you uh, before you actually install it. And uh, suspend and shut down issues, or, or or shut down or suspend issues as well. Now moving on, uh, there's also a camouflage mode, so you can actually camouflage it to look like a Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows XP, something like that. I I don't really think that anyone's going to use that in the real world, unless they're hardcore illegal hackers or something. I, I don't even know, but uh, that's all for show anyway, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, but. Um, the whole point of this is just for security and privacy, blah blah blah, all of that. 
So it's uh, been getting a lot of interest in uh, the online news media in recent times. So thought I'd do a quick video about it. So I haven't, I haven't even, uh, you know, tip of the iceberg with a lot of stuff that you can talk about this, especially in terms of security protocols and protection that you uh, you can have on here. But um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. A, you could call it a lightweight, secure operating system, but by no means. Uh, 100% secure. There's always going to be issues with, uh, as they call them, man in the middle attacks and things of those natures and key loggers and etc. etc. So, guys, uh, thanks for your time. That's about the video. And uh, please leave a comment, subscribe, and leave me a message. Thanks for your time. Ciao.